Here's how I'm using the new Notion calendar. My name's Jared Hill. I'm a professional photographer, a digital marketer, and I use Notion to manage my life and my business. I've also released a lot of templates over the years for Notion, and I've got a link to those down below. So if you're interested in templates, I have a lot of these. These are all free templates for things like a contacts database, interactions calendar, notebooks, task management, project management, lots of different templates that I have available for free. Notion Calendar is something that I'm extremely excited about because I have often used Notion for a calendar in a sense, but it hasn't always worked great to be like a main calendar because it's missing some things. And Notion Calendar definitely fixes some of those things while leaves a couple of things out that I hope that they will add into the future. So what you're looking at is my calendar here. And I use Google Workspace for my business. And so Google Workspace is just like Gmail. It gives you Gmail for business. So I get a Google Calendar and Gmail essentially for my business. And that's what's connected over here. And I have several different calendars such is my main calendar. I have a family calendar and that's a shared calendar between my wife and I so that we can add things to the family calendar and know what's going on. And then I also have US holidays and I have birthdays and stuff enabled as well. And then down below, you can see the different calendars that I brought in from Notion. And when I say calendars, it doesn't mean that your Notion database has to be a calendar. It just means that your Notion database has to have a calendar view option. So for example, if we go over into my tasks, I have to have a task calendar option here in order for Notion Calendar to work with it. So if you're not seeing one of your databases over in Notion Calendar, simply go into your database and add a calendar view by going down and clicking add view and then choosing a calendar option for a new view. Once you do that, you'll be able to add a new database over here on the left-hand side by clicking add new Notion database and then typing in and searching for your database and adding it. So you can see here, I've got a list of all of my different databases and I've pulled a few of those in. So what's nice about this is I'm able to overlay my tasks. You can see on my calendar, I have these different check boxes here, these green check boxes. Those are tasks that I have assigned to those days. And so it's easy for me to look at my entire calendar and now also see the tasks that I have to achieve for that day. This is something that was missing in Notion. I would have to bring calendar data over into Notion, which usually meant doubling of the work. And so it's nice to be able to have all of this there now. Now to get those green check boxes, there's a simple thing that I do. I went and created a template for a new task. And so if we look at this template, I'll just edit it real quick. It's really easy. All it is is new task and it has a green checkbox here already. And that green checkbox, which is the icon for this particular database entry, is what is going to show up in your Notion calendar. And I simply just chose the green checkbox for that. If you have a bunch of tasks or something that's in your database, but it doesn't have icons, it's very easy to add a bunch of those. You simply go into a traditional database view here and just select a range of all of these and then go to this icon right here go down to icons and then tap on the icon that you want to add and it will add that icon to all of those task entries, which is a great option for updating all of those quickly. I also manage all of my YouTube content. I have my content database calendar, which typically was completely separate from my calendar. But now because I have it connected in Notion calendar, I'm able to see all of the videos that I am filming and producing. And it's very easy for me to see what video is going out on a specific day so that I can make sure that I also share it on social media or do whatever else I need to do to promote promote that video. Now, one of the things that I did when I first started using Notion was using Notion as an interactions calendar. What that means is that my calendar in Notion is connected to contacts that I have in Notion as well. I wanted to take notes whenever I spent time with somebody or hanging out with somebody or had an interaction. I wanted to be able to take notes and have access to that so that I can go back and review what we talked about last time. Maybe somebody shared something important with me like an anniversary, a child's birthday or something like that. And I wanted to notate that information and have that information down. This was extremely important for me when I was in client meetings and clients were sharing things with me. Maybe there were tasks that I needed to get done or things that the client wanted to accomplish. I would put all of that in my interactions database, which I had as a calendar view, a great option. And I spend time coming in and updating this as frequently as I need to. And now that can be connected with Notion Calendar. The only problem is, is that there's a disconnect between calendar entries and Notion entries. When I add something to the calendar, so 
note, let's just add something to today's date. You can see over on the right hand side, I have the ability to add the event name. So I could put film notion calendar video, and then I can choose a time just like I would. And I, I'm kind of bummed that there's no like natural language input here. So I have to like manually click and choose a time. That's something that I really enjoyed about using Fantastical on the Mac is the ability to use natural language input and have all of this stuff update. You can see here that I have the ability to choose whether this repeats. I can add participants. I can add conferencing through Google Meet or Zoom. And I can also add a physical location, which uses maps to look up that information and add it to the calendar entry. I then can connect this event to a document or a database. So for example, if I was to add this to interactions, I would click on interactions. And then if I go over to Notion, you can see in a second here, it should pop up. So now that I've connected it to interactions, it doesn't necessarily do anything for me. What I do have is a Zapier connection and that Zapier connection will take what I entered into my calendar and it will bring it into Notion. And so you can see here in Notion, now I have an entry that has the title of that event. It has the date and time and it also marked that as scheduled. So this is something that happens because I have Zapier connected with Notion and my calendar, but I have to use that in order to get a entry created in my calendar. Because simply creating a calendar event doesn't create anything in Notion unless you create a new page. And for tracking interactions, I found it better to still use the Zapier connection that I used in the past because otherwise I end up having duplicate entries. For example, if you see here, this photos with Josh, I have two entries here. I have both the calendar entry here, and then I have the notion entry as well. And that's where this experience falls apart a little bit for me because I would rather have those interconnected. If I enter something into notion, for example, if I create the entry in notion because it's in my interactions calendar and my interactions calendar is connected to notion calendar, this will show up in the notion calendar. But if you look at the differences between these two, the calendar entry has the ability for the event title, the date and time, whether or not to add participants, choose a time zone, add conferencing, add an address, and also choose between different calendars. If I choose the Notion page, you can see most of this goes away. All I get is event, time, time zone, and then what database it's connected to. I don't get the ability to add a location or add recurring or anything like that. And so for me, that experience is kind of broken. I still need to use Zapier to automatically push new events into Notion. I can't do that in Notion Calendar because I want to have an entry in both my database, but I also want to have an entry that has the ability to have location information and conferencing information. So I wish there was a way to combine those two so that I don't have to have two entries, both in my calendar and in Notion. But this isn't the end of the world. Hopefully it's something that Notion can fix or modify later on with a feature adjustment. But right now it just means that I'm going to have to have duplicate content in my calendar or choose not to have my interactions shown in the calendar by just simply turning them off. Now there are some other great features of Notion Calendar that I just haven't been able to find in most other calendar applications. For example, if my wife adds something to our family calendar, which is a separate calendar from my main calendar, how am I able to mark my main calendar as my time being unavailable. I hope that made sense. Let's look at an example. If I was taking my daughter to school at 1 p.m. next week, and that was added to the family calendar, that wouldn't show me as busy on my calendar and potentially a client could book time with me that would overlap. But what I could do is right click and choose block on calendar and then choose my calendar and I can choose to block that timeout on my calendar. This is amazing. Being that this is a recurring event, I can have this also block out all future dates as well. And then I can have it include details or show as busy on my calendar. Being that the booking system that I use, which is Calendly, wouldn't show any details. It doesn't really matter. I can, I can have include details or show as busy. But if I was sharing this calendar with other people in my business or other people who I didn't want to see the intricate specifics of each calendar item that I was attempting to block out, I can choose show as busy and it would just show me as busy during that time. 
whereas include details would show on my calendar that I am taking Michaela to school during that time. So this is a great feature that saves me a ton of time and makes it so that I don't have to have duplicate entries on my calendar. I love this feature of Notion Calendar. So let's take a quick look at Notion Calendar on the iPhone. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up Notion Calendar. And what I don't like about Notion Calendar on the iPhone is the inability to see a more expanded view of the calendar. You can see here we are in kind of a two-day view where I can view by scrolling down the entire day and I can swipe back and forth between different days. So as I scroll over and I can see more things, we've got our all-day stuff at the top and then we also have all of our specific scheduled items throughout the day as we scroll. And I can change, there's a one, two, and three day view, so I can increase or decrease the amount of days that I have shown. And I can tap here on the number up at the top that shows the actual date, and it will take me back to that actual date. So I can scroll through my calendar, which is, which is pretty good. But I'm unable to see any other views of the calendar, which is something I don't like. I don't like just being able to see blocks of time here. I really like the agenda view that's common in most other calendars. So for example, if I open up Fantastical, which is the calendar I tend to use, I like having a calendar here that I can see easily. And I like the agenda view where I can view all of the things in a list. That's just an easier way for me to see what's going on. This type of view that Notion Calendar has might be a little bit better for those of you that have very busy days with lots of scheduled blocked out times where you really just wanna be focusing on one or two days at a time and you have a lot that's there. But for my uses, my schedule is not as condensed and there isn't as much going on on the day to day. So it's really important for me to see an agenda view because I might be looking at something here and I'd have to scroll all the way down to see more stuff that's going on. And I know I could pinch and zoom and get more information or less information based on how much I want viewed at a time. But I just find that the agenda view works the best for me. Let me know down in the comments section which calendar view works best for you. So with Notion Calendar only having been around for a week or two now, this is how I'm using it. It's a great application. I think it has a ton of promise and it brings in features that I use every day in Notion and makes it more integrated into my daily life. So on my computer, Notion Calendar is definitely a go-to for me because it gives me a heads up on the tasks, on the video content that I'm creating. And I have a couple of other areas that are hidden, but having all of that information on my calendar calendar gives me a really nice heads up look at what's going on so that I could project out into the future and plan my time more accordingly. Whereas on my smartphone, I still find myself using my old calendar app because it gives me that agenda view. So I hope you found something useful from this video on how to use Notion Calendar and how I'm using Notion Calendar so that you can implement it into your life and be more productive. If you have any questions or comments, definitely let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to check out some of my free Notion templates that you can grab. Simply go to the link that's in the description. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you back in the next video.